Hello viewers, welcome to the Bachelor's Course of Population Studies. Today we will discuss about the criteria for determining poverty line. Let us start with the meaning of poverty. Poverty is the inability to get the minimum consumption requirements for life, health and efficiency. These requirements include food, clothing, shelter, education and health. When these requirements are not fulfilled, it adds to sufferings and miseries. It affects the health and productivity of the person. Poverty line is the line which indicates the level of purchasing power required to satisfy the minimum needs of a person. It represents the capacity to satisfy the minimum level of human needs. The purchasing power can be expressed in the form of average per capita income monthly expenditure. Poverty line divides the population in two groups, one of those who have minimum purchasing power or more and those people who do not have this much of purchasing power. The former group is regarded as living above the poverty line APL and the later group is considered as living below the poverty line that is BPL. These are the people who are called poor. Poverty is generally used in two ways absolute poverty and relative poverty. Absolute poverty refers to the poverty keeping in view the economic conditions of a country. In most countries attempts have been made to measure poverty by the criteria of per capita consumption of calorie and minimum consumption level. In India also, poverty is measured under these two criteria. The calorie criteria. What is calorie? Calorie is the measure of energy derived by a person. According to Professor Ruth and Dandeka, a person in India must get minimum 2250 calories per day. According to Planning Commission of India, an individual in rural area should get 2400 calories and in urban areas 2100 calories per day. On the basis of this view, in 1979 to 80, 51% of people in rural areas and 40% in urban areas were living below poverty line. Another criteria is minimum consumption criteria. In 1962, this criteria was adopted by the expert committee appointed by planning commission. According to this committee, those people whose consumption expenditure is less than Rs 20 per month at 60-61 prices and less than Rs 40 per month at 1968-69 prices live below poverty line. In the year 2009-10, Planning Commission had suggested to raise poverty line. As per new guidelines, a family of five with an income of less than rupees 3000 a month in urban areas, that is rupees 600 per person per month and rupees 2250 in rural areas, that is rupees 450 per person per month, should be considered poor. Let us talk about the second criteria that is the relative poverty. Relative poverty is in relation to poverty in other countries. According to a UNO report, those countries will be treated as poor where per capita income is less than $755 per annum. Absolute lines aim to measure the cost of certain basic needs which are often interpreted as physiological minima for human survival, nutritional requirements for good health and normal activity levels are widely used to anchor absolute lines. The monetary lines are intended to have constant real value. We find real value after deflating it by price index. By contrast, relative lines do not claim to represent physiological minima and are instead 
set at a constant proportion of current mean income or consumption. Absolute measures are common in developing countries while relative measures tend to dominate in developed nations. Let us understand the estimates of people below poverty line in India. The percentage of the population living below the poverty line in India decreased to 22% in 2011-12 from 37% in 2004-05 according to the data released by Planning Commission in July 2013. To understand the national and state wise poverty estimates, the Planning Commission estimates levels of poverty are to be seen. According to these estimates, the surveys conducted by the National Sample Survey Office that is NSSO of Ministry of Statistics and Programs Implementation. The current methodology for poverty estimation is based on the recommendations of an expert group to review the methodology for estimation of poverty that is Tandulkar Committee established in 2005. The committee calculated poverty levels for the year 2004-05. Poverty levels for subsequent years were calculated on the basis of the same methodology after adjusting the difference in prices due to inflation. Table 1 on the screen shows national poverty levels for the last 20 years using methodology suggested by the Ternulkar committee. According to these estimates, poverty declined at an average rate of 0.74 percentage points per year between 1993-4 and 2004-5 and it declined at 2.18 percent points per year between the year 2004-5 and 2011-12. Therefore, it can be concluded that the rate of decline in the poverty ratio during the most recent 7 year period 2004-05 to 2011-12 was about three times of that experienced in the 11-year period of 1993-94 to 2004-05. The percentage of persons below the poverty line in 2011-12 has been estimated at 25.7% in rural areas, 13.7% in urban areas and 21.9% for the country as a whole. The respective ratios for the rural and urban areas were 41.8% and 25.7% and 37.2% for the country as a whole in the year 2004-05. It was 51.1% in rural areas, 31.8% in urban areas and 45.3% for the country as a whole in the year 1993-94. In 2011-12, India had 270 million persons living below the poverty line, that is the Tendulkar poverty line, as compared to 407 million in 2004-05, that is a reduction of 137 million persons over the 7 year period. In a way, it's a huge reduction. State-wise data is also released by the NSSO. Table 2 on the screen shows state-wise poverty estimates for the year 2004-05 and 2011-12. It shows that while there is a decrease in poverty for almost all states, there are wide interstate disparities in the percentage of poor below the poverty line and the rate at which the poverty levels are declining. Let's discuss the history of poverty estimation in India in brief. Pre-independence poverty estimates. One of the earliest estimations of poverty was done by Dada Bhai Naroji in his book Poverty and the Un-British Rule in India. He formulated a poverty line ranging from Rs. 16 to Rs. 35 
per capita per year based on the prices of 1867-68. It was based on the cost of subsistence diet consisting of rice or flour, dal, mutton, vegetables, ghee, vegetable oil and salt. Next, in 1938, the Planning Commission, National Planning Commission NPC estimated a poverty line ranging from rupees 15 to rupees 20 per capita per month. Like the earlier method, the NPC also formulated its poverty line based on a minimum standard of living perspective in which nutrition requirements are implicit. In 1944, the authors of the Bombay plan that is Thakur Das et al. in 1944 suggested a poverty line of rupees 75 per capita per year. Let's see the post-independence poverty estimates. In 1962, the Planning Commission constituted a working to estimate poverty nationally and it formulated separate poverty lines for rural and urban areas of rupees 20 and rupees 25 per capita per year respectively. V. M. Dandeka and N. Nath made the first systematic assessment of poverty in India in 1971 based on national sample survey data from 1960-61. They argued that the poverty line must be derived from the expenditure that was adequate to provide 2250 calories per day in both rural and urban areas. This generated debate on minimum calorie consumption norms while estimating poverty and variations in these norms based on age and sex. Then came the Alag Committee in 1979. In 1979, a task force constituted by the Planning Commission for the purpose of poverty estimation chaired by Y.K. Alag constructed a poverty line for rural and urban areas on the basis of nutritional requirements. Table 3 shows the nutritional requirements and related consumption expenditure based on 1973-74 price levels recommended by the task force. Poverty estimates for subsequent years were to be calculated by adjusting the price levels. The estimates show that the minimum calorie consumption should be 2400 calories for rural people and 2100 calories for urban people. In 1993, an expert group constituted to review methodology for poverty estimation chaired by Lakarwala made the following suggestions. Consumption expenditure should be calculated based on calorie consumption as earlier. Number two, state specific poverty lines should be constructed and these should be updated using the consumer price index for industrial workers in urban areas and consumer price index of agricultural labor in rural areas. And discontinuation of scaling of poverty estimates based on national account statistics. This assumes that the basket of goods and services used to calculate consumer price index of industrial workers and consumer price index of agricultural laborers reflect the consumption patterns of the poor. In 2005, another expert group to review methodology for poverty estimation chaired by Suresh Tandulkar was constituted by the Planning Commission to address the following three shortcomings of the previous methods. Number one, 
consumption patterns were linked to the 1973-74 poverty line baskets of goods and services. Whereas, there were significant changes in the consumption pattern of the poor since that time, which were not reflected in the poverty estimates. Number two, there were issues with the adjustment of prices for inflation, both specially according to regions and temporally according to time. And the third one was that earlier poverty lines assumed that health and education would be provided by the state and formulated poverty lines accordingly. On the basis of all these, it recommended four major changes. Number one, a shift away from calorie consumption based poverty estimation. Number two, a uniform poverty line basket across rural and urban India. Number three, a change in the price adjustment procedure to correct spatial and temporal issues with price adjustment. And number four, incorporation of private expenditure on health and education while estimating poverty. This was a very important recommendation by the committee. The committee recommended using mixed reference period based estimates as opposed to uniform reference period that is URP based estimates that were used in earlier methods. It based its calculations on the consumption of following items, cereals, pulses, milk, edible oil, non-vegetarian items, vegetables, fresh fruit, dry fruits, sugar, salts, spices, other foods, intoxicants, fuel, clothing, footwear, education, medical, non-institutional and institutional both, entertainment, personal and toilet goods, other goods, other services and durables. So, the basket was enlarged. The committee computed new poverty lines for rural and urban areas of each state. To do this, it used data on value and quantity consumed of the items mentioned above by the population that was classified as poor by the previous urban poverty line. It concluded that all India poverty line was rupees 446.68 per capita per month in rural areas and rupees 578.80 per capita per month in urban areas in the year 2004-5. The table on the screen outlines the manner in which the percentage of population below the poverty line changed after the application of Tandulkar Committee's methodology. From table 4 shown on the screen, we can see substantial difference in the percentage of people below poverty line measured by the methods given by Lakarwala Committee and the Tandulkar Committee for the year 2004-5. Whereas, the Lakarwala Mayor estimated only 27.5% people below poverty line. Estimates according to the Tandulkar criteria were 37.2 percent, such large difference. Though for urban areas, both the Mayas are showing quite similar results. The percentage of population below poverty line given by Lakkarwala committee was only 28.3 percent whereas it was 41.8 percent as calculated by Tandulkar committee for the year 2004-5. This shows some underlying fault between the two mayors that is the Lakarwala mayor and the Tandulkar mayor. 
the committee also recommended a new method of updating poverty lines adjusting for changes in prices and pattern of consumption using the consumption basket of people close to the poverty line thus the estimates released in 2009 10 and 11 12 use this method instead of using indices derived from consumer price index of agricultural labor for rural areas and cpi for industrial workers for urban areas as was done earlier table 5 outlines the poverty lines computed using the tendulkar methodology for the years 2004 5 9 10 and 11 12 from the table as shown on the screen we observe that for the year 2004 5 a person having income less than 446.6 per month in rural areas and rupees 578.8 per month in urban areas falls below the poverty line in 2011 12 this income was raised to rupees 816 per month for rural areas and rupees 1000 per month for urban areas next was the rangarajan committee in 2012 the planning commission constituted a new expert panel on poverty estimation chaired by c rangarajan with the following key objectives to provide an alternate method to estimate poverty levels and examine whether the poverty lines should be fixed solely in terms of consumption basket or if other criteria are also relevant number 2 it was to examine divergence between the consumption estimates based on nsso methodology and those emerging from the national accounts aggregates number 3 the third objective was to review international poverty estimation method and indicate whether based on these a particular method for empirical poverty estimation can be developed in india or not expert group submitted its report in 2014 giving per capita monthly expenditure as rupees 972 in rural areas and rupees 1407 in urban areas as poverty line it preferred to use monthly expenditure of household of 5 for the poverty line purpose which came out to be rupees 4860 in rural areas and rupees 7035 in urban areas it argued that considering expenditure of household is more appropriate than that of individuals living together brings down expenditure and as expenses such as house rent electricity etc get divided into five members other recommendations were for normative levels of adequate nutrition average requirements of calories proteins and fats based on icmr norms differentiated by age gender and activity for all india rural and urban regions is considered this included calories requirement of 2090 kilocalories in urban areas and 2155 kilocalories in rural areas it reverted to the old system of separate poverty line baskets for rural and urban areas which was unified by the tendulkar group it recommended modified mixed reference period in which reference periods for different items were taken differently in place of mixed reference period report says that poverty line should be based on certain normative levels of 
adequate nourishment plus clothing house rent conveyance and education as per these estimates 30.9% of rural population and 26.4% of urban population was living below poverty line in the year 2011-12 the all india ratio was 29.5% in rural india 260.5 million individuals were below poverty and in urban india 102.5 million people were under poverty line totally 363 million people were living below poverty line in the year 2011-12 it also noted that there was substantial drop in poverty ratio from 2009 levels let us talk about the world bank's poverty line Let's see what World Bank has to say about the poverty line. The approach of poverty estimation by the World Bank is similar to that employed in India and in most of the developing countries. The World Bank estimates of poverty are based on poverty line of 1.25 US dollars per person per day. measured at 2005 international prices and adjusted to local currency using purchasing power parity asian development bank too has its own poverty line which is currently at 1.51 us dollars per person per day there's a new concept of multi dimensional poverty index The Global Multidimensional Poverty Index is an index of acute multidimensional poverty. Since 2010, the UNDP Human Development Reports have published an MPI using the most recent existing data. The 2014 Multidimensional Poverty Index that is MPI covers 108 countries and 5.4 billion people disaggregated by 780 subnational regions let's gauge how this concept of measuring poverty is different from the ones used earlier multidimensional poverty index that is mpi makes acute poverty visible in multiple dimensions it provides a clear informative poverty headline it monitors change and reflects effective policy interventions quickly it also shows the interconnected deprivations poor people experience it enables policy coordination it provides incentives to target the poorest by tracking changes in intensity of poverty it displays success in leaving no one behind through direct disaggregation and celebrates success it also compares non monetary deprivations directly independent of the price or currency to conclude this module i'll say that national poverty lines vary enormously across the world and they reveal a marked economic gradient the poorest 15 countries in terms of private consumption per capita have an average line of 1.25 us dollars per person per day while the average is 25 dollars a day for the richest 15 countries in india also there are variations in the poverty ratio measured by planning commission tendulkar formula and rangarajan formula there are controversies arising every day regarding the number of poor in the country measured with different methods 
multidimensional poverty index is a better index of measuring poverty that makes acute poverty visible in multiple dimensions. That is all with today's lecture. I hope this must have added to your knowledge. Next time we will discuss about another important aspect of poverty. Till then have a nice time. Bye bye.